Today I have the privilege of interviewing Don Kennedy, who was a, second, a sapper in the 2nd 6th Field Company, Royal Australian Engineers, during the, four, during the Second World War. And in particular, he, was, he became a prisoner of war in Singapore on the 15th of February 1942. Don, thank you very, very much for agreeing to do the interview. I wonder if you might start by just telling us where you were born, your year of birth, and where you went to primary school and high school. Mm -hmm. I was born in Leonora, and on the 11th of December, 1918. And my, my father owned a cattle station 25 miles out of Leonora where I spent my youth. And unfortunately he got high blood pressure, had to, had to move to a cooler climate. They had to sell, which is unfortunate because it was a bad time to sell, a good time to sell as far as he was concerned. But of course the Great Depression followed immediately afterwards. Yes. And the property he bought at Wandering, big property there, because Wandering, as you know, is one of the, is cold, yeah, good place to be. But, <coughs> oh, it's a just long story and probably got no real, no relativity to what I'm supposed to ask, ask, ask you, is it? Well, that's, it, it is interesting, but maybe, when, no, no, what about, when did you enlist? Do you recall the date you were enlisted in the No. I mean? They, they brought a, recruit, a recruiting train up from Kalgoorlie to Leonora, doctors and everything up on it. And we had warning it was coming, so the people that, you know, ones that intended to join up, went, went in that day, I was 80, 90 miles out from, from Leonora, I was. Came in and I passed med medical, and that would have been 19. The end of one now. Yeah. Uh, I tell you what, you have to lose your seat there. I got my discharge sitting at the end of the show, wouldn't it? Okay, I'll just stop it. Okay, now, Don, just before we paused, you were just going to look up your date of enlistment. Have you got that there? Yeah, that's the. the First of August 1940, I think you said. First of August 1940. Yeah. Okay. So, you, where did you enlist? Was that in done Le in Leonora? In Leonora, yeah. Okay. Then, where did you go for your training? Uh, first up, uh, 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 Claremont Showgrounds. Mm -hmm. Yes. But only for a short period. Then we went to Point Walter. Yes. I was rough, roughly, I think, about, about one month. Yes. And then went to Northern. And we stayed in Northern until they formed the Second Six. Second Six. Yes. Once that was formed, uh, uh, and we were all together. And so then we went, went to, of all places, Ascot Race Course. Yes. And lived in tents. And we stayed there until we sailed. Really? So when did you actually do your training as a sapper? Then. We, did were, you? we were training the whole time yeah, in, yes, Northern, yeah. in Northern Man yeah. and in Ascot. Yes. So I, I take it that somewhere during 1941 you went to Singapore, did you? Uh. Well maybe I'll ask you, do you remember the name of the vessel you went on? It was land here. Yes, yeah. So I think they went up in 1941. It's Singapore, isn't it? Yes. 41. It was May, I think, when we went up. It probably was 41. Yes. Yeah. And did you stay on Singapore Island or did you go on to the Malayan? We went to Malaya. Uh, yes. And formed, built a camp there. Camp there. Yeah. Do you remember where that was? Kota Peru. No, <laughs> no that's a long way up. That's yeah. a long way up, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, was only, only about three miles over the causeway. Oh, Jehorbrahu. Jehorbrahu. Yeah, I think, yes, yeah. yeah. Mm. And th did you go any further north than that at any time? Only uh, su uh, supplying our bases. Yes. See, we, we had uh, camps at Mersing, uh, and the capital now, what's the capital now? Kuala Lumpur. Kuala Lumpur. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and we, we had 
big semi trailers. Yes. Which was had bridging equipment on. Mm -hmm. That we unload that and take all these supplies up to our bases. Yes. Our depots. Yes. And do you remember, like the Japanese landed in Kota Baru yeah. in early December 1941, and then they started advancing down the mainland. Yeah. What was your role as an engineer during during the going to build the bridges? Was a very badly run thing it was, hopeless. Yes. They tell us right, load all the we might have to make a bridge. We so we load all our bridging gear, and we had very big semis. Loaded to the sky, and we'd go up 15, 20 miles. And we're somewhere where we couldn't turn around, they'd say retreat. This was the pattern of the whole of the Malayan campaign, mm -hmm. was to move up into position mm -hmm. and retreat mm -hmm. back here. Mm -hmm. And they uh, say, you read that book with one, one thirteenth of an elephant? One fourteenth of an elephant, yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. I mean, it was a very well written book. Yes, I it was agree. It a shambles. I mean, mm. why make why, why did Percival surrender mm. so early? Yes. I mean, the whole units were intact still, mm. thousands of them. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. You never, never understand. I might as well stay at home. <laughs> yes. What was the name of the commanding officer of your unit? Uh, oh. Lewis. Uh, he was a major or a colonel? Uh, a major. Mm -hmm. yeah. And was he a, a, an engineer, a qualified engineer? Oh yes, mm. you see, you can be a civil engineer and you automatically be, be, became a captain or a major by yes. joining the engineers. Yes. Same yeah. as a doctor. Yes. Yeah, that, that was automatically a captain. Yes, yeah, I understand. Mm. Now, when, once uh, Singapore, when, when you actually pulled back onto the island, do you know where you were? Fastown Park. Mm -hmm. And did you have, did, were you doing any demolitions? Were you blowing up bridges oh, to yeah. try and impede them? all the bombs and things in the world, but we never had a chance to use them. Didn't you, really? Yeah. Mm. And you remember the day that the uh, capitulation took place? The what? When the Japs, when we surrendered to the Japanese, do you remember? Actually, that day. Do you remember that day? It was the thirteenth, wasn't it? No, no, fifteenth. Fifteenth of fifteenth. Yes. That day, mm. the siren, the all the VIA siren on the island blew, and we wondered what was going on. Yes. We discovered that the person was surrendered. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful place, Fast Down Park. Mm -hmm. uh, ab absolute luxury. Everything was, mm -hmm. and we dug up the lawn, the stiff trenches, and God knows what. But yeah. The thing that annoyed me there was there were like more Japs on the island than the Finnish than there were Malays before, before we got there. Mm. And it filtrated slowly over the years. Yes. And you'd have people in the house talking and going on. You didn't know where to throw a grenade through the window and, and in case it was an innocent family. Yes. It was a hopeless setup. Yes. You didn't know who to fire on. Mm. But the thing is, I mean, we'd, we'd been training solidly since 1940 and never had a chance to prove it, yes. everything. Yeah. I understand what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, do you remember when you went, you actually moved to Thailand? No. Do you know, did you go up with a, a particular group or a force of people? Yeah, well, Air Force it was. Oh, you went up with F, F Force? Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Okay, do you remember which train you went up first on? First train. Oh, so... I uh, was the first train up and the last train back. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, one of the doctors on the first train, as I understand it, was Captain Roy Mills. Does that name... Oh, yeah, Roy Mills. Yeah. yeah. Big, yeah. big boy. Yes, yeah. Mm. Now, when you... So, you, you, you had the horrendous trip up on the train of four nights, five days, and cooped up, you know, 30 of you are in each railway coach, yeah. that sort of thing. When you got to Ban Pong, uh, what was your impression of that, the place that you had arrived at? Wonderful. Yeah. Well, on, the, on the first day of March, there was a, on the roadside, you could buy bananas and eggs and God knows what, yes. you know, from the, from the, from the locals. Yeah. Were you carrying much of your personal gear at that stage? Or? 
Well, we whittled it down nationally, you know, yeah. to what we normally have, but yes. we, we carried, had to carry our own gear, all of it. Plus, uh, all the Red Cross stuff as well. Yes. Just where we needed it back, which wasn't allowed, but uh, it, it's a big, enormous wooden box, four, four, four men to carry one in each corner. Yes. Put rails out. And uh, especially at night time, which we did most of our walk, walk at night, God knows why, because I mean, there was no, it wasn't a friendly trip for thousands of miles then. Yes. Uh, we slip and slide okay, <laughs> but we took it in turns naturally. So the, you had the high temperatures to cope with, and it was, was raining. Was it raining? Oh, it was the, raining every the, night. the track yeah. muddy? Muddy. Yeah. Mm. Do you remember the? But the first portion of your walk was on bitumen, wasn't it? For the first oh, no. fifty oh, that's, kilometers. That's, yeah, that's going up to to Canchanaburi. Yeah. Going up to Canbury. From Banpong to Canbury. Canterbury was, was, was Tarso. Yeah, the bitumen road did not go through as far as Tarso, but yeah. Do you remember at any time having to cross a river? River? Yeah. Every about every two days. Yes, it, but a big river. Yeah, well, big rivers there yes. too. Yes. The shortage of water there. Yeah. Now, when you when you were marching up, do you ma do you know how many days or how many nights you marched for? Or? No, I don't. I don't remember how many how many days. I would say about fourteen or fifteen, probably. Yes, some people say two to three weeks, so that would be about right. Mm -hmm. Now, do you know the names of any? You, you you've already mentioned Tarso. Do you remember the names of any of the other camps that no, you went no. to? Do you remember how far north you went? 187 miles, we, we, I believe. Did you? Yes. Mm. Uh, now, you mentioned to me when I was speaking with you on the telephone that you ended up working with four other, three or four other sappers yeah. doing survey work. Yeah. What was the name of your, your fellow sappers? Uh, Peter Pell, Kelly Smith, the third one I can't remember now, and Jack Dixon was the surveyor. And he was from Kalgoorlie, or? Yeah. Yes. He done a lot of the underground mine surveying. Yes. So, but uh, what amazed me was the way he, he, he could find these he wooden pegs. Mm -hmm. You know, we'd, it, in Penadol jungle in front of us, and with our axes, we had to clear a, a, a passage, passage say, like further. Lo and behold, after three or four of these hundred yards stints of letting him, you know, clearing the jungle so they could see further. Lo and behold, there's a pig. <laughs> really? Which, yeah. I, which but, but to my, my mind, was you know, amazing. Yeah. And and were these really old pigs yeah, from the old previous pigs, but, surveys? But they were in the 1800s. Yes. Yeah. Late in the 1800s, yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. Mm. Now, the Jack who you had with you, was that an officer or...? No, uh, no. I use a sergeant from memory. And was he a surveyor in his own right? No, I don't think so. How would he have known whether you were doing your job? <laughs> Perhaps was, well, he may have been a surveyor, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps well, he probably was. Yeah. Um, now, where did you get your food? Where, where, when yeah, you were when, when, we, when we got it, it was hit and miss system with an elephant come down the opposite direction, mm -hmm. yeah, with, with rations on for the Japanese. Yeah, and we did get out of space from that. Yes, yeah. So you were living with them. What, what sort of protection did you have for you to live under, to sleep under? Uh, 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 one of the raincoats. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, it was a ground shed. Is it, was it or a pon something we, we, like a we poncho? Use it, poncho. Mm. We use it for a ground sheet. Yes, yeah. The ground was so wet, yeah. yeah. And of course, you were in the monsoon, so it was very wet. Yeah, that's incredible. Now, how long did you do this surveying for? Uh, I, maybe I'd say about a month. Mm. It got over the bound pretty quickly. Yes. Yeah. But you were—you must have been well ahead of the oh, yeah, the, the slaves yeah. that were clearing, yeah. doing the real clearing. No, well, actually, there was a mob close to us, but. Pretty close to us all the time, yes. making a rough road. Yes. Very rough road. 
Yes. Yes, they were bigger, bigger to get through. Yes. So you, you saw the vehicles going up the track from time to time? Oh, yes. And were they the big six-wheel drive vehicles? Yes, yeah. city wagon. And some of them were being driven by Japs and some by POWs, were they? Or yeah, well, no, that's the, that's the age of, I didn't see any POWs driving them. Yes, yeah. Later in the piece, I believe, some of them had, well, what's the town like? I was, you know, that's a... Australian drivers driving those, those trucks when they were carting all the railway line the old stuff that they weren't going to use yes. and sending it, bringing it there and, and loading stuff they didn't want on Japan on the boats. Really? Yeah. Now when you were up the line did you, uh, how was your health? Your uh, Actually well, I was young then and tough as a boot but uh, I didn't have any sickness at all until I'd say probably a year after and I got very, very young. Mm. And you were still in Thailand? Yeah. Mm. And did you, were you sent to a hospital facility then? or Eventually I was sent down to, to Kambiri. Yes. Yeah. And that's quite close to what is known as the bridge over the River Kwai. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And uh, do you remember the name of the doctor who might have looked after you there? Or the name was that one. Yeah. Were they Aussies or Brits or M that? most Australians? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we kept they kept pretty close together. Yes. Yeah. Um, Fagan that was one, and uh, very very there wasn't much a doctor could do, so we you know I said, but very very saw one. Yes. The only thing cured that was vitamin B, but that was in a very scarce supply. Yes. I saw an example of how important that was. Uh, yeah, it's happened at our unit, Huey Copeland. He was short. Uh, he was he, very, very was slowly rising up from his feet mm. right up, mm -hmm. which my unfortunately never got above the knee. Mm. I had it for about what, two years. Mm. And it stayed down below my knees. But as Huey Copeland, he would have died in no time, I reckon a few more days. They gave him a small jar of marmite, I would say eight ounces. They said, now we'll leave this to you. Mm. Have so much three times a day. And it was incredible. Mm. It just, it, it, it's very, very, just disappeared. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now you mentioned Major Fagan. Did you, did you see him yourself or what, did he treat you personally? No, he's a, a great friend of mine, was, which was the next bed to me, sleeping on the, on the outer. Uh, bamboo slats. Yes, yes. He had cancer very badly in the stomach. Yes. And uh, eventually they got Fagan to look at him. Yes. And uh, Fagan said to me, he's got no hope. No. Uh, he was quite bad. He died three days later. Yeah. And what was his name? Bill McIntyre. And was he one of your your men from oh, your yes. unit? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I think you found his name. Yes, sir. Yes, he sir. lived at George's little, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. You did ask me about that. Yeah. 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 So from Kanchanaburi, uh, when the line was, well, you, you, you must have come back to Kanchanaburi when the line was finished. Yep. Yep. How did you come down? Did you come down by train? Yep. Mm -hmm. Train. Do you remember that journey? Certainly. <laughs> I sure do. I was quite sure those bridges wouldn't hold it up. Yeah. 300 feet down was the water. Yes. <laughs> You've got to hand to the Japs, they were wonderful makeshift engineers, they really were. Yes. The way they had that bamboo spliced, you know, with bloody rat hand, oh, it was incredible. Yes. But they carried it up the mine, no, no train fell over it. No. But uh, there were a couple of significant structures there, wasn't there? The one that you said was a big one was probably oh, yes, called well, the Three Tiered Bridge. Yeah. And what, did you remember another one that went right the way around the front? On the edge of the river, but around the front of a cliff. The river Kwai, I think. No, this no. is actually one called Wampo. Yeah. Wampo? Yeah. Yeah, I was one Wampo for a while, yeah. yeah. Mm. Ron Earl was at Wampo for, yeah. a, for quite a while, he told me. Yeah. Well, I never, never struck about Ron. No, well, he was on the Burma end. Yeah. And, then and he kept in. inquiring as he went down the different camps. Yeah. He, he was seen Don Kennedy, and yes. someone said he was here yesterday, <laughs> but not today. Yeah. And yeah. Ron never got, got up with me. Yes. Now, do you remember any of the other doctors at, at all? You've mentioned Fagan, your new Mills. 
any, did you have any contact with Bruce Hunt? Uh, yes, he, he was just briefly at one, one of the camps. Mm. Uh, he was up where Diamond Deer was. Yeah. And, and, but what amazed me with Bruce Hunt was they brought a chain, train in one, one of those f further up camps towards Burma mm. with rice with mm. the prisoners of war. Mm. And the Japanese said, We can't find fit enough men to unload. Mm. We can't eat enough. And he got in, in, the, in the huts. Me, big bull of a man, <laughs> and in no time flat he had a big working party, and then uh, then the, the, the rice quick smart, yes, rather than lose it. Yes. And he was having, going on with a whole bag of rice over his shoulder. Yes, yeah, he was a very powerful man. Oh, yeah. mm. that, that's the way I had to do it. I never, I've never spoken to the man. Yeah. Do you remember him ever being beaten? Do you, you, when you were in the area, did you ever see him beaten no, by the Japs? No, no. Okay, were you ever beaten by them? Only the odd back, backhander and things like that, you know. Yes. And I suppose you can still count in Japanese, can you? Eh? You can still count in Japanese, can you? <laughs> yeah. Now, did you do uh, any of the work, like embankment work? You know, once you'd finished your surveying, did you do any oh, God, building yes, up yeah, the embankments? Yeah. Well, see, that uh, Hellfire Pass, that's where we all had... Uh, uh, a section to do it was two meters long, a meter wide, and a meter deep. Mm -hmm. And three men had to do that and, and cart up the embankment that was, was approached on the old fire pass yes. with the baskets. Yes. And of course, we were all, you know, bushes, and we knew mm -hmm. that we, had, we, we used a pick and shovel. Yes. So we used to get out, we were finished our work by four o'clock. Mm -hmm. So then we go and help some of the, you know, Sick of the other chaps. Mm. And, but of course the Japs then woke up that, 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 that <laughs> uh, you know, uh, we were doing our work too quickly. Mm. So from then onwards, no man was allowed to go back to camp until all, all the holes were finished. Mm. So that's put a stop to that, so yes. we, had, we had to help. Did you do hammer and tap at any time? For blasting? No. Mm. Mm. Yeah. And what about pile driving for bridges? Did you ever do that? Uh, yeah, that, 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 pulling up my hand, yeah. yeah. But the sm smaller bridges, we built them out of uh, beautiful teak logs. And we had to dig around these trees, big mm. teak trees, until they fell. Mm. And the elephants would push them. It was amazing. If we hadn't done enough work with the, with the root system, he just leaned against us and sniffed with his trunk and back off. It wouldn't, uh, we do it more <laughs> when we got the stage where we knew he would push it over, yes. and he would push it over. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And then we chopped the top of it and bottom of it, and, yeah. and he he with they were incredibly intelligent animals. Yes. And that they'd lay the take them over, or perhaps two elephants would tow them down to the bridge bridge side, mm. and we'd roll them out and land put them in place. Yes. Yeah. What about the uh, the 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 the, the um, Natives that controlled them, the Mahouts. What? Yeah, well, I mean, they, they were amazing how they could handle them. Yes. Amazing. Yes. Now, what, when you um, when the line was finished and the F Force were brought down, oh no, I'm sorry, I, I must ask you one question before we get to that stage. You mentioned that you, uh, when you were going up the line, you were in close proximity to Major Roy Stevens. Yeah. Are you able to tell me anything about him? No, well, he, he, he w walked with us every day, every night, mm. mainly. And well, I felt sorry for him because he was exhausted like we were. Mm. But of course, once he, once he got to camp, stopping overnight or over day, uh, these people would all line up on sick parade. Mm. And he had to hold a sick parade then, <laughs> yes. instead of going to sleep. Yeah. yeah. And would you be able to guess what age he might have been? Was he much older than than? Well, he's certainly not older than I was. Yes. Until, yes. Uh, I was I was twenty what, three then. Yeah. He'd have been, I'd say, forty-five. Yes. Mm. Now you, I think you also mentioned uh, that he wasn't well. Did, do well I, I think he was well enough, but he's only you lost Yes. Yeah. And did you see much of him at any time when you're up on the line? No, only just on the march. Yes. Yeah. Now, uh, I'll just mention some names of some other doctors. Uh, Captain Peter Henry, you didn't 
have any contact with him. No. Uh, Captain John Taylor. Yeah. Captain Victor Brand. Yeah. Uh, Captain. Yeah, they were all different units, up there, but yes, or yeah. different groups. Like you went up there in packets of about six hundred, so they would have been with a different group. Yeah. Lloyd Carl. Yeah. Frank Carl. Um, I think we've just about done them. What about chaplains? Did you ever have any contact with any chaplains? No. They were there, but I, 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 I didn't have any religions, so yes. they didn't bother me. Yeah, well, up in your area there were a couple of outstanding ones. One was a Roman Catholic by the name of Paddy Walsh. I don't know whether you heard his name mentioned at all. And the other one was a, a captain or chaplain... Um, what was his name? No. Um, I'm just uh, relying on Helen for, for uh, oh, assistance. Yeah. Um, oh, the name escapes me, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I felt, let the team down. I know his name so well. I'll just stop this for a second. Now, sorry for that delay, but my memory bank slipped me in. I was, I was referring to the chaplain. Uh, Pauline, but you you said that you didn't know of him. When did you ever have any contact with any medical orderlies who you know, impressed you that they were able to help you? Mm, no, not really. Okay. All right. So when you left to walk up the line, I, you had your own clothing. Did that deteriorate? And did how did your clothing? last you for the time that you were a slave on the boom well I always really in dealing I always had a pair of shorts yes I never got to the stage of uh, the that, what do you call them lap the, lap or lap, 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 Jack yeah. happy yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yes uh, did you keep your slouch hat no, no it yes. disappeared so, went on the so what did you have on your head anything nothing hmm? nothing nothing no and you did you have a shirt no, I didn't have my shirts. So at night when you were sleeping, how did you... I kept a blanket always. You kept a blanket, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember, was, did you bring that from Australia? Or? Oh, I wouldn't have a clue. Really. Yeah. You know, there were so many stops and starts. I don't know yeah. whether I had one along the way or whether it was the original one. I don't remember. Yeah. How about your boots? Oh, the boots went long ago. Yeah, so... Bare feet. Bare feet. Really, and better in in the in the mud anyhow. Yes, yeah. And did you ever get uh, tropical ulcer? A very small one there. Mm -hmm. yeah, about the side of a thirty cent coin, I think it is. Yeah, see. Yes, yes. Yeah. 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 Luckily, it never got any deeper. Yes. Yeah. Which other people have seen. So, one yeah. day they have a thing that size, next day it'll be that size. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they used to scrape them with a sharp spoon. They mm. yeah, mm. And uh, Nan was a doctor. Yeah. yeah he he was uh, used to do the amputations. Well, Nan was back in Singapore though. Right. So, uh, Major Nan was not on the line. He was down in Singapore. Well, he well, was wasn't it? on the line, wasn't he? No. Must be Fagan then. Uh, Fagan certainly did them. Yeah. Uh, he did uh, quite a number around Kanchanaburi or Canbury. Yeah. Mm. But Nan, of course, uh, was a West Australian yeah. uh, and he stayed in Singapore the whole time. Did he? Uh, but did some good work down oh, there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, he was renowned that he could take the appendix out and leave a scar that, you know, bigger than the, the width of that matchbox. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's a nice way to establish a reputation, isn't it? <laughs> That was in when I got to Changi, that was that. Uh, yes. He was operating in Changi. Yes, yeah. Mm. Now, do you remember when you came down from the, after you'd finished on the line, and you'd come back by train, uh, and you'd come back to Kanchanaburi, or as it was called then, Canbury, uh, and things were, the pressure was off. Do you remember any sort of entertainment or concerts in, the, in that? Not there, in no. there, None at all? No. Did you go back to Singapore fairly quickly after you came down yeah, there? Yeah, fairly quickly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you... I got back to Singapore, I oh, 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 weighed 70 pounds, which is five stone. Five stone, really? <laughs> and what was your normal fighting weight? Two and a half. <laughs> really? Yeah. 
And did you any of your mates were were, were any of your mates in Singapore that hadn't gone up the line? Or, oh, I never did. And did, did, them. did they recognise you? <laughs> when I first came here. Yeah. So when you got back to Singapore, what what happened to you there? Did you did the Japs have you on any work parties there? Oh yes, yeah. That's mm. where we made a bit of money on the side. Yeah. yeah. We, we, we played a job called Pea Party, working in a garage, putting, putting trucks together, engines together. Yes. And that was wonderful. We had a contact there every day, see. We could take in a, 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 a ground sheet, which was worth about $70, I think, remember. We, we'd buy them for $10, mm -hmm. and if they didn't get caught taking them in or out, you know, it was very good. Yes. And we were the honest ones, there's two of us, Kelly Smith, myself, and other one. But um, the, the officers, the fountain pens and, and wristled watches, mm -hmm. they're easy things to handle. Mm -hmm. But we, we can, you know, hide them. And, but of course, the officers are being taken down. Mm -hmm. They the Jap say, no, the bloody Jap found it and took it off me. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But then they realised we were the honest ones. Mm -hmm. And we had an endless supply of fountain pens and watches to sell. Yes, yeah. yeah. So did you sell them virtually on commission for your mates? Yeah. Did you? And did, who'd you sell them to? The Chinese or...? No, yeah, the Indians Indians were good. The Chinese were good too, they were yeah. honest, very yes. honest. Yes. It had an Indian driver mm. was driving the truck that used to take it to work every day. He had plenty of contacts. Mm. And he was the honest one to deal with too. So w where were you actually living in, when you were in Singapore? In Changi. In, in the Chang prison or in one of the, the huts around the prison? Well, both. Mm. In the prison for a start. Yes. And then the, one of the huts around the outside. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it was recorded that uh, when um, Roy Stevens got back from the line and he was in Singapore, one of his fellow doctors was just amazed at how skinny he was. You know, it must have been like you, five stone. Uh, uh, and he picked him up and carried him to the quarters. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, what? Just uh, what? What would you, would you describe as the worst? event that you experienced with the Japanese? Well, I thought being taken prisoner was the worst of uh, stuck a McCraw more than anything else. Yes, and what about a, an, an individual Japanese who probably did something really bad in your mind or dreadful? No, uh, if, if you used your common sense, we got on well, well, you know, with them. Yes. Well, we could expect put it that way. Yes, it's. It has been said to me by some other people that if you, were, if you were sensible, you could keep out of trouble. Yeah. yeah. Yes, but yeah you did. You didn't get cheeky with them. Yeah. And you, you always appeared to be doing your work and that sort of yeah. thing. Yes. Uh, did you ever experience a Jap who you would regard as a good Jap, someone who was quite reasonable? Yeah, yeah. Is there any particular incident that illustrates that? No, not really. But see, the whole thing is, <coughs> when we got back to Singapore mm. and we had some of these work parties, they, I think the Japs were fighting, with, they had so many prisoners all there that they didn't want to stir them up too much, put it that mm. way. Mm. And uh, we had a lot of storekeepers and, and school teachers even as guards. Mm. Yeah, reasonable really men that, 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 and I think that that was the reason why that you know they were having had so many prisoners all there to handle. They, they thought well, softly, softly be the approach. Yes. So we worked in the Alexander Hospital for a long time. Mm. And we used to march there from River Valley Camp every morning back at night. Yes. And. Uh, those, those Japanese were all uh, professional men, mm. and no, no, no problem with them at all. Mm. Did you ever work on the wharves or on the airfield? Oh yeah, in the wharves, yeah. Mm. Not, well, the airfield was, I didn't work in that, that's my initiation, into, <laughs> introduction into, into war. Mm. Uh, then we were making roads there so they could hide, hide the fighters in, in, the, in the rubber plantations. Mm. And 27 bombers went over, yeah. and, and I let everyone on top of my head, I'm sure. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, the fact that they were able to bomb where you, you were going to build an airfield, 
would uh, what demonstrate to you that the their intelligence was very good. They knew where everything was. Would that be right or not? No. Well, we, we, this is we, we, before we, 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 before we, Singapore we, fell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we were building these roads yeah. in the plantations, mm -hmm. so they could park their fighter planes. Mm -hmm. where they couldn't park big, big bombers there. Yes. That's when, when we had an air force. Yes. And uh, they came up and pattern bombed and flattened everything. Yes. You know, all the hangers and mess, mess things, you know, just completely flattened it. Yes. And it was being a big, big area like that and a lot of planes, a lot of them are not killed as well. Mm. And just going, you, while we're talking about, you know, before the fall of Singapore, do you actually remember the day that the causeway was, was blown? Yeah, <laughs> you you weren't within. You couldn't see. You weren't where you could see it, though, were you? No, I saw the result of it. Though. Yes, yeah. You might as well have on a firecracker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Enormous. Yeah. No, it's it's it rock. Yes. Yeah. It's a few little holes in the road, and that was it. And they were able to repair it very quickly. Yeah. As I understand it, yes. Oh yeah. But any engineer would. We don't think you would. Because now with the new explosives, we probably could blow it apart, mm. but not with dynamite. Okay. Now, uh, going back to when you came back from the line and you're in Changi, did you have any contact with any of the doc doctors in Changi that you recall? No. You didn't. You didn't no. need to. You weren't in hospital at any time. No, they put us on good rations. Ch Changi actually was home from home as far as, you know, <coughs> had a very organised cookhouse. Yes. And the cooks, you know, they knew how to, how to handle rice by this time, actually. Mm -hmm. For a start, it was just pat, you know, rubbish. Yes. They just put, put a bag of, bag of rice in a big poly and a bucket of water and <laughs> boil it up. Yes. It's, it's you know, very smartly learned how to cook, how to cook rice, mm. and but Chang Chang he was, uh, as I say, it, it, it was home from home. He was the Jap never came inside Chang Chang prison at all, mm. except on occasional inspections. But it was entirely run by Australian and, and British British generals and brigadiers and what have you. Yes. So. But, you know, it didn't take long to put, put our weight back on again, mm -hmm. being young and healthy. Now, do you remember the day that the war ended? <laughs> yeah. How did you find out about it? Well, a, 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 a British major para parachuted in for a start, mm -hmm. but a, a, the day before, they started dropping uh, rations in, 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 with, by parachute, mm -hmm. and of course then we knew it was... We were, our, we had about radios in in Changi, mm. where we knew exactly when when when, when uh, the Japanese sur sur surrendered. Mm. We, we knew immediately. And next day, they started dropping food in. Yes. And of course, some people made pieces of themselves. One poor bloke died. He ate too much sugar, mm. ample, and it all melted in his stomach, mm -hmm. and it killed him. Mm. Although, but, uh, this, this British major. He was in charge of the landing force uh, in Singapore to take control of it, you know, take the uh, Japanese surrender. Mm. And he, of all places, he'd, he'd done 180 or 90, 280 I mean, parachute drops. He went through the tile roof and from the building and broke his ankle. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And broke it bad, badly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I felt sorry for him. Mm. How long was it before you left Singapore? About, about six weeks, I think, mm. roughly, roughly from memory. Yeah. And uh, how did, did you did you move around the place freely that during oh, that yeah. period? Oh yeah. Next day we were in Singapore. Next day. Yes. And we met some of the British sailors, and they invited us out to their. They had a, 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 a what's it called? It was a, well, a decent bump of a ship. Mm. But that, that's where they used to repair the metal torpedo boats. Yes. Uh, apparently, the torpedo, torpedo boats could move, pull them alongside. Mm. They could take an engine out and put an engine in, in, in a, 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 a half an hour. Really? Yeah, but, yeah. And uh, were they what? Would they have been fair mile 
Eh? Well, do you know what class of vehicle they were? You said they're motor torpedo boats. So. Yeah, we used to call them MTBs. Yes, yeah. And were they steel hulled or oh, yeah. hulled? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. And how did you actually l get home to Australia? What did you come by plane or ship? Or? No. We came by ship, the Arawa. Mm -hmm. And I think they wanted to, you know, make us look presentable before we were home. And oh, the food and the arrow, I was out of this world. Have fresh bread and butter and mm. and that. But, mm. And we came, came very slowly to Darwin mm -hmm. and then round to Queensland mm -hmm. and then back to Sydney. Yes. I got off in Sydney. Yes. I said one day, one of the sailors said, Can't they, this boat go any faster than this? You know, it was plaking along. Yeah. He said, Yeah, of course it's going. He said, It's quite a fast ship. Mm. He said, But you've got to spend more time on the ship to get back. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. And they tell me, tell me, tell me what happened, I weighed about 13 a ton. Yeah. <coughs> so when you left uh, Sydney, how did you get back to Perth? Train. Train. Yeah. All the way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, where were you held while you were being, going through the processes of discharge? Discharge? Mm. Uh, oh, I went been home. Uh, well, uh, wife and her family had a house in Mount Hooverville. Yes. I lived there. Yes. And had to report at Mount Point, Point Water every morning. Yes. Seven o'clock. It's a long way to go from Mount, well, Mount Hawthorne to Point Walter every day. <laughs> it certainly was. Mm. Uh, three train changes. Yeah. And uh, uh, a bus. And a bus. Well, last one. Here, I mm. would hope that yeah. I have to get about five o'clock. If you didn't go there regularly, mm. you didn't get discharged. Yes. Yeah. But some used to hire a taxi mm. and they the taxi roaring on the parade ground and the boat would fall out. Mm. <laughs> it's just half full the night before. Yeah. And, uh, President, sir, yeah. did you get back to the taxi and, get, and go again? Go off again. Yeah. <laughs> and whereabouts in Mount Hawthorne did you live? Calgary Street. Oh, yeah. What number? 25, I think, man. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We'll probably come back to that later. <laughs> and uh, do you remember the date of your discharge? Oh, you said it. Yeah. yeah. You might, Helen and I will have a look at it. And once you, once you did have your discharge, what, what uh, occupation did you uh, undertake for the rest of your life? Uh, fa farming. Yes. Yeah. Where was that? Next to up here. Oh, really? Well, I knew he. Right here. Mm. Yeah. Well, it was a timber mill island, went there. Yeah, they yeah. wanted a bush boss. Yes. And uh, so I went, I went there. The only, only tree I'd ever seen before was a mulga, mulga tree and up in, in the Murchison. Mm. Anyway, I got the job. Mm. And I stayed there until the mill closed. I went to the mill closed, and, that, and the, the owners of the mill, they had, had a mill with Boy Brook and one at Harvey, mm. one in Mundari, one mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, you want the date of my discharge? Yes. Seventh yeah. of January, nineteen forty-six. Yeah. So we got that the seventh yeah. of January, forty-six. Thank you, Helen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, mm. when the mill ran out of timber and closed, mm. they said to me, "We just stay on and turn this into a farm." Yeah. Well, nothing pleased me more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they bought me a D eight dozer to mm. try to get in, and it ended up a beautiful farm, mm. two and a half thousand acres. Mm -hmm. And what one, uh, towards the finish, we were shearing 12,000 sheep a year. Mm -hmm. A lot of sheep this close to Midland. Yes. Yeah. Very convenient. Yeah. Mm. So I had a wonderful life. All the kids were born there. And yes. Yeah. Now, I hadn't picked up the point, but you, you were married before you went away to the war? No, engaged. And engaged? I got engaged to my, my future wife. Yes. And uh, never saw her again for five years. Yes, yeah. It must have been hard for her because she. Well, she, she joined their mice. Yeah. Oh, did she? Yeah, army as well, yeah. Really? Well, that's marvellous. And uh, did she uh, go to reunions with her fellow females? No. After the war? No, no. Mm. In, fact, in fact, there weren't a lot of WX girls there, really. Mm. Yes. Was she in WA or did she go elsewhere? Both. She went to Meriden, Meriden for a long time. Yes. On the switchboard. Yes. Yeah, in Meriden. Mm. She was too young. They were, uh, she wanted to go to New Guinea. Mm. Her, my, all of her friends went to New Guinea. Yes. She wasn't allowed to go because she was under age. Yes. 
I think they didn't take them for 20, 20, I think, yeah. And how long do you, do you have any idea how long it was before she first knew that you were maybe still alive and a prisoner of war? Well, she knew I was a prisoner of war because we used to occasionally have a card. Mm. You could send a card out and get a card in. Yes. <laughs> she knew I was a prisoner of war. Mm. But didn't have the clue, you know, whether I'd survive the, the, the remaining three years or two and a half years. Yes. She was she hurt last, you know, until uh, after the surrender, and they, you know, issued a, a statement of paper. Yes. Yeah. Mm. And what year did you get married? In January, forty-six. Forty-six. Mm. Right around the time of your discharge. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's lovely. Well, Don, uh, I have to say I'm ser terribly grateful to you for the opportunity of interviewing you today because uh, the stories that people like yourself have to tell are quite unique and I think it's uh, incumbent on us to let young people understand just what some people went through during the war. Yeah. Maybe they might be inclined to try and avoid wars in the future. <laughs> but yeah. thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah.